What's up guys, Big D Wiz here. Got a little treat for you, as I promised. Purchased several of these little mini amps, the chip amps from China. So we're gonna call this Chinese Mini Amp Invasion Part Two. So what I did here is I separated out the amps with, um, I've got numbers on them and I also have the price. So I'm gonna kind of do a quick overview of each one. And I'm gonna test all these, but I'm gonna let you guys pick out which one I test first. See which one you're most interested in. So let's start down here at number one. Uh, several of these use the TPA 3116D2 chip. It actually uses two chips. You can see them right here under the purple uh, heat sinks. Some of them have Bluetooth, some of them don't. This one does not. 20 bucks. It has volume controls. Uh, it has the three outputs for the speakers and it uses the um, barrel connector for the power. And it actually has RCAs built in, which is nice. Again, no Bluetooth, but just give, kind of give you a difference in what we see here. So this is number one for 20 bucks. Number two, this is the most expensive one of the TPA 3116s, but you can see it also has the two chips, uh, has some larger caps here. And this one actually, you have to wire in the power using the three separate um, connectors. Really just you need power and ground and then the other one jumps, the two outside connectors jump. But just right off the bat, I really like the green, um, I think these are called Phoenix connectors. I like these better uh, than the blue ones because it'll accept larger wire. And I'll show you that when we get to that point. But there's the Bluetooth module kind of hanging off the side. Kind of strange, not sure why they did that. But anyway, again, this is the most expensive one. Number two, 36 bucks. Number three, this one's a little different. Um, this one uses the same chipset, the TPA3116, but it bridges both of the, uh, the chips. And I don't know why it says 120 by 120, it should be 100 by 100. But uh, anyway, so this is a two channel. This one is not a 2.1 as the other ones are. And I really don't like the way you have to control it. So it has the Bluetooth module built in and it's assuming that you're gonna control this through these buttons here. It doesn't have a volume potentiometer. You're gonna have to use your phone or whatever Bluetooth device you connect to it as the volume source. So, uh, and there's the power input right there. Again, another barrel connector. So anyway, this one is uh, 14 bucks, which is pretty incredible with the Bluetooth module for to be 14 bucks. Um, that's number three. So number four, this one's a little bit larger. This one's, they call this Beyond TPA3116. This uses the STA508 chip, and I think there's two, uh, but I can't tell because the way this is glued on, this huge heat sink here, I can't really get it off and get under it. Um, but this one does not have Bluetooth. It has a header, uh, RCA jack, and my amp didn't come with that. I had to buy those buy that separately, but it's supposed to come with it. So the correction, this did not come with this header, and it actually wasn't even in the picture. So I'll give you a link if you want to buy one of these. They're about $3 if you get one assembled. Unassembled, they're like $2. So it's up to you if you want to put it together or not. It wasn't worth my time for a dollar, but you'll have to buy this separately for this specific amp. But you can see this has got the blue connections for the speakers. And again, the blue ones don't accept larger wire as the green ones. So I prefer green. But anyway, this one's supposed to be a little bit more powerful than the other ones, but this one actually requires 32 volts, whereas these uh, only need 24 to get their maximum power. So that's number four, $27.20 is what I paid for it. Next up, the TDA7498. This is a different chipset. This is again a two channel and it's got a fan built in, which kind of neat. Uh, no Bluetooth on this one. It has RCA ends, a single volume knob, no tone controls, and um, the speaker outputs are on the back and you also have to connect in the power through the back. Um, so it's got a nice little fan here and a nice big heat sink. So that one's pretty cool. Um, and that one's 18 bucks and we'll call that one number five. So we'll move up here to number six. This is again another TPA 3116, 2.1 channel, got the dual heat sinks, 
Uh, this one has a switch for the power here, up, down, and it's got the three other tone controls there for volume and bass and treble. It has the green connections on the back. There's your power via barrel, con barrel connector here and a uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, input jack and 35 volt caps. So this one's pretty nice. This one was only 15 bucks. So it's a really good deal for the 2.1. Here's the next one, which is very similar in price. This one's 16 bucks. Pretty much the same as the other one, except this one has those blue connectors, which again, like 18 gauge wires, about as big as you can fit in there. Barrel connector again for power, wants 24 volts, has three different knobs. And this one actually came with the, um, with the knobs, whereas most of them didn't. You can see the heat sinks on this one are a little bit small too. That's number seven, 16 bucks. Number eight, this is another TPA 3116D2. Has two chips. One of them is bridge for a subwoofer. Has a switch on the front. Has a little LED light. Um, has a barrel connector for power. Wants up to 24 volts. And then a 1 8 inch input. Now, the interesting thing about this one is it uses 25 volt caps. And I'd be kind of iffy any of these Chinese amps that have a 25 volt rated cap and say they want 24 volts in because a lot of times those ratings are a little underrated, overrated. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I'd be careful with this one. I might want to change those out to 35 volt caps before I test it. Or maybe I'll just test it like it is and if it pops one, then it pops one. But again, number eight, that's 16 bucks. Number nine, you guys have already seen. I did a previous video on this. This is the little subwoofer version of the TPA 3116D2. This bridge mono, uh, we got like 85 watts continuous or, or RMS out of this. It's a nice little module. I'm actually gonna buy a few more of these because I really like the way this functions. It does a great job. It's only 10 bucks. There's no reason not to get some of those. Now, back here, number 10, this is only $13. Um, this is a little bit different than the TPA 3116s. This one uses the TPA 3118 chips. You can see them here and here, and there's no heat sinks. Supposedly, this one does not need the heat sinks. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but we'll find out. RCA is on the front, barrel connector for power. Um, I have to check the voltage and see what it requires. I'm not sure if it's 24 or it might be 18. And then we got the nice green connectors here for speakers. So this one was cheap. It was 13 bucks for a 2.1 amp. That's pretty good. Now this one is not one that you can buy anymore, but this is sort of what got me interested in all of these amplifiers was I bought one of these Cambridge Soundworks um, Model 12. It's actually a transportable system that comes with a case and the amplifier and the speakers and everything. And um, this one's got a 2.1 amp built in and it's actually got car stereo chips like the ones that go in head units that it uses for the outputs. But I think from what I've read, this one was rated at like two by 11 and then one by 22. So not very powerful, but I still wanna test it. And I know you guys can't still buy this unless you buy one off of eBay, but I still wanna kind of compare that to how all these other ones work. And not only how they work and how the power works, but the sound uh, also to see if you know the old class a B ones sound any better than the, the new class D's So last up number 12 got this one from MCM electronics. This is the stellar labs 15 by 2 Class T this one was around 12 or 13 bucks when I bought it, but I think it's around 20 now But the really neat thing about this one is it's got you can put double um, a batteries in here so you can put, it takes four on this side and four on that side. It takes eight AA batteries, but um, it actually works really well with the AA. So you can have it fully portable with just using standard AA batteries. And this has got, you can see the outputs for the speakers, the input um, for the eighth inch. And there's another jack for a DC 12 volt. And it's just got the single knob on the front. You turn it, it clicks, and then you might be able to see the blue LED. It's on right now, so it turned on. But anyway, this one's really neat. Um, like I said, when I got it, 
they were like 13 bucks, so I got a couple of them. Uh, that one's the number 12 in the list. Just a quick note, guys, on the prices here. Um, these are prices that I paid. I'm not sure what they currently go for. It may be less, maybe a little bit more, but I uh, just wanted to kind of give you a comparison to show you, um, you know, what you can expect to pay for these amps. All right, guys, there you have it. The Chinese Mini Amp Invasion Part 2. Some of them are not Chinese Mini Amps. Actually, that one is still made in China, but you can't buy it anymore. But um, so anyway, just check the video description. I'll have the number and I'll have the link to where you can purchase it on eBay just to kind of compare. You can go back over it yourself just to see which one you want me to test first. We're ranging anywhere here from like 10 bucks. Of course, I've already tested this one, so we're not gonna do this one again, but from 10 bucks up to about $36 is the most expensive one. So um, just check the video description. Let me know which one you want to see first. We're going to test all of them, but we'll uh, let you guys choose which one goes first. Exciting times. Big D Wiz coming at you. Until next time. I'm out of here.